Hello guys, Ancient Gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome for, for oh, my right. channel. <laughs> and welcome to my channel. As for today's video, we have finally a new review of the new AMD drivers that are gonna be released and they are the 24.01.01 but they are the preview drivers which are called the 23.40.01.01. So remember, these are not the official 24.1.1 drivers, but they will turn into the official 24.1.1 drivers that will most likely be released in January 24th or something like that. So just for you to know. And if you're new to this, you can download these drivers, so don't worry. They are not some drivers that only some people can get access to, like me. Everyone can download them and the link will be in the description. And even if you Google it, let's say AMD 23.40.01.10, the drivers will appear for all of you to download. Okay, just for you to know once again. And just before starting, I can tell you right away that these drivers bring lots of new things. On the official side, we have, for example, AFMF, AMD Fluid Motion Frames that are now going into the official drivers. They were on beta for several months, going now on the official drivers. And there are more things that are going into the official drivers as well. But as usual, I'll talk about those uh, in the things that I found in the goods and the bads about these drivers after the release notes. But I can tell you that things are looking good, almost as good as to the sponsor. Today's sponsor is Maximum Settings, a cloud-based gaming service where you won't need to spend thousands of dollars to upgrade your PC or a personal nuclear plant to boot up your system. Just do it! And for as low as 9.95 Canadian dollars a month, you can play the most recent games on your computer, even if your hardware isn't prepared. Sign up today for your full Linux gaming PC with no resource sharing and start enjoying high-level gaming on any PC. Now let's start with the release notes. Firstly, we have new features highlights with AMD Fluid Motion Frames, AFMF, Boost FPS for a smoother gaming experience with frame generation technology. AFMF adds frame generation technology to DirectX 11 and 12 games on AMD Radeon 700M, RX 6000 and RX 7000 series GPUs. For system setups in hybrid graphics mode, AFMF must be supported on the displaying GPU for the feature to be activated. And yes, it says 700M, meaning that the APUs that are gonna be released, for example the Ryzen 8 thousand G ones that bring the Raiden 700 M series integrated graphics already support the AFMF feature in the drivers, meaning that you can use frame generation with those integrated graphics. Once again, on the Ryzen 8000 G processors, I believe um, all of them support them. All of them support the AFMF with the Ryzen with the Ryzen 5 8600 G and the Ryzen 7 8700 G bringing Ryzen AI as well, so an NPU. And still inside the AFMF, AFMF preserves image quality by dynamically disabling frame generation during fast visual motion. And this is one of the bummers of the frame generation inside the drivers, AFMF. If you're moving your mouse, I mean, if you're moving your mouse, you won't get uh, the normal frames once again. But as soon as you quickly turn it, the, the frame generation will disable itself for let's say half a second. And it does that in order to preserve the image quality because the fluid motion frames, since they do not have access to the, to the game engine motion vectors, as soon as you start moving around fast, well, the image quality would be crap and that's why they disable the image quality, uh, at least for now. Maybe it will get better in the future, but so far it is what it is. As for the what to know we have, AFMF can now be enabled in any DirectX 11 and 12 title using the HyperRX on the AMD Fluid Motion or the AMD Fluid Motion toggle, sorry. AFMF may introduce additional latency in games and may not offer the optimal experience in fast-paced competitive titles, no shit. AFMF is recommended to be combined with AMD Radeon Anti-Lag to reduce the in-game latency. They still didn't say anything about the Anti-Lag Plus, if the Anti-Lag Plus is coming back, if it isn't coming back, because even with the APUs, since they bring RDNA 3 architecture, you should be able to use Anti-Lag Plus on them, and yet nothing about Anti-Lag Plus after that thing about people getting banned by using Anti-Lag Plus in online games such as Counter-Strike 2 and so on. Still, they are integrating AFMF inside the HyperRX, and there's actually a good side of this, because since they are integrating it in the HyperRX, function we have AFMF and Radeon Boost enabled at the same time and remember when they said that uh, as soon as we start moving really fast 
the frame generation disables itself, but then we have Raiden Boost that only activates itself in fast motion. Uh, so they kind of compensate each other which is, well, a nice addition. I don't, I'm not really a fan of Radon Boost, of course, but it's at least a nice addition to have the possibility of having them both work together. Now continuing, AFMF is recommended to be enabling while maintaining a minimum in-game FPS of 60. AFMF may be enabled slash disabled on the fly using the default hotkey Alt Shift G. AFMF currently requires the game to be played in full screen mode with VSync disabled. For better compatibility with a borderless full screen titles, Windows 11 users can enable optimizations for windowed games. And that's actually quite easy to enable, it's in the same menu that you go for example for the display resolutions, then you go to the graphics settings, uh, change the default graphics settings and you have there the option of optimizations for windowed games and you just go there and enable it. Simple as it can be. Users can check AFMF's frame generation status using AMD Software Adrenaline Edition's in-game overlay. AFMF adds frame generation technology to boost FPS outside of game's engine. To see the resulting FPS, users can use AMD Software Performance Metrics overlay. Support for third-party performance monitoring tools is not available at this moment. And that's actually a bummer because, once again, if I want to check the, the real FPS, let's say that, the real FPS that I'm getting currently with frame generation enabled, I can't use MS Afterburner or I can't use any other monitoring software besides the AMD One because they are still not prepared. Maybe in the future they will, but for now they aren't, and you actually need to use the Radian Overlay in order to see the real frames you're getting, because once again, uh, they are loading the frames outside of the game engine, and that's exactly why most monitoring softwares can't read it. So far. Maybe they will in the future, but so far, they can't. So just use the Radian Overlay. As for the fixed issues, we also have lots of them, actually. I, I'm just seeing a big list here, so let's start with the first one. Intermittent driver crashes may be experienced while AFMF is enabled and the game's resolution is changed for switching between different tabs. The first one. Brief stutter or driver crash may be experienced after closing Xbox Game Bar while the AFMF is enabled. FreeSync displays may report an erratic FPS when AFMF is enabled, something that happened to me before. Artifacts such as wavy or tearing effects may be noticeable in certain scenes when AFMF is active. Basically, this is one of the things that happened before when we're talking about um, artifacts or motion artifacts with fluid motion frames, but gladly they seem to be fixed. Nice. AMD Software Adrenaline Edition may intermittently crash, resulting in AFMF becoming inactive, as reported by the community. Performance drop may be observed in some DirectML workloads, also fixed, which is a nice thing for people using DirectML. Intermittent gray screen after driver upgrade with certain monitors, such as the Nexus NX EDG27 4K, that's a big name, on Radeon RX 7000 series GPUs. Graphics API metric may show as NA in certain uh, Windows Windows Workplace <laughs> applications, I don't really know what this means, I don't really remember, UWP is something like that. Um, and the last one is, the last fixed issue is, intermittent flickering of certain ground textures may be observed while playing War Thunder with 4xS AAA enabled on some AMD graphics products such as the Raiden RX 7900 XTX. So if you were one of those people having the issue uh, of having the, the textures flickering or something like that, in War Thunder, well, let me know in the comment section if it is fixed or not, because AMD says it is. But since not everything is cotton candy, unicorns and very big flowers with clown heads doesn't really matter, let's go to the known issues. The first known issue is audio may intermittently become out of sync with video when recording from AMD Software Adrenaline Edition with AV1 codec. Once again, it happens the same as it did in the past drivers, which is said, still not fixed. Frame rate target control toggle may disappear after enabling AFMF using the Alt Shift G hotkey. Intermittent driver crashes during gameplay plus video playback may be experienced when hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is enabled, so be aware of that. Parsec application may crash on the host system after reboot, so also a thing that wasn't fixed. 
Deathloop may be stuck at a black screen for a prolonged period when launching on some AMD graphics products such as the Raiden RX 6900 XT, a new known issue, something that wasn't happening before I believe, and the last one is, after driver update, AFMF may be incorrectly enabled in some custom per game profiles. If you are upgrading your driver, AFMF might be enabled automatically, so what you have to do is clean install the drivers if possible, always clean install the drivers with EDU or AMD cleanup utility if possible, okay? It's the best way that you can do things. We also have some important notes this time, starting with, for users who previously installed an AMD software preview driver, running AMD cleanup utility is recommended before installing this driver, what I was telling you before, of course. And the last one is, due to the potential latency impact of AFMF, it must be manually enabled in the per game settings for certain fast-paced competitive titles, even if AFMF was already enabled globally. Gamers are free to enable AFMF in these titles based on their preference and gameplay style, however, they may not experience optimal performance, specifically at lower frame rates. I wasn't telling you this, but I, I was telling that in terms of fast motion, AFMF was not the best thing that they could have. And even if it is enabled in terms of HyperRX, you're still having Radeon Boost, which once again is not optimal. So AMD actually did a good thing. Even if you enable AFMF globally for all games, as soon as you enter competitive games that the AMD software, uh, well, recognizes, let's say as, as competitive, maybe something like let's say Counter-Strike 2 and some other games like that, it won't enable AFMF. It will disable it automatically unless you manually enable it for that specific game. Now, as for the goods and the bads of these drivers, I actually found some really interesting things. So first of all, we have, for example, some new things in the installation, nothing really relevant, but we have, we have some notes on the installation. Um, and after that, we have things that we didn't have before. And remember, these things, most of them were only on the Fluid Motion drivers and they are now gonna be on the official ones. For example, the first one that we've been talking about in across all video is AFMF, AMD Fluid Motion Frames, which are basically frame generation inside the drivers. It is not as good as FSR3 frame generation because the drivers don't have access to the, to the game's motion vectors, so the quality will be lower and it will have more latency, of course, but you can use it in any DirectX 11 and DirectX 12 game. Any. You just go there, enable it, and it works. So it's a win-win situation for people um, running older games, for example, that don't support frame generation and so on. People that really want it, it works. That's all you have to know. Another thing that's coming to the official drivers is the ability to record at 30, 60, 90, and 120 FPS. You can use several um, several streaming codecs, like for example AVC H.264, uh, the AGVC H.265 or AV1, and any of those will enable you to record at 30, 60, which are the base frame rates, and then 90 and 120 frames per second, and I've tested it, and it works. And it works well. You have to raise the video Mbps, basically the video bitrate a bit, since you have way more frames, you need more information to fill those frames. But besides that, it works completely fine, and looks, looks cool if you have a high refresh rate panel, definitely. And in terms of performance, I also noticed that it runs better, at least in the cards that I tested. I tested, for example, Alan Wake and Modern Warfare 2 on my 7900 XTX, and both games run better. I tested Alan Wake 2 with the 23.11.11.11.1 drivers, which run Alan Wake 2 better than the 23.12.1, and even then, these new drivers run even better than those drivers in terms of average FPS and especially in terms of frame timings that are much smoother now with the newer drivers, meaning that they actually improved on that department. As for the Modern Warfare 2, we also have more FPS and especially better 1% lows, meaning that the smoothness of the gameplay improved as well. And the only downside that I found compared to the, to the older driver versions was that the software when sliding, uh, when sliding on the window let's say that, to, to search for other options, it kind of feels a little bit choppy compared to the previous versions. That's the only downside that I found. It is faster, performs better, brings new features. I see no reason for you to not 
install these drivers. And by the way, if you have any other cards, leave a comment in the comment section and let me know what's the performance with your card, because I really want to know. And basically that's all for today's video, thank you very much for watching, well that's not all because we have now the performance comparisons in the end of the video that you can see once again with the XTX and the GRE 7900 models, you can see those, uh, those side by side comparisons and you can see for yourself uh, what I was talking about in terms of performance, so we not only have more features but we have better performance overall. Once again, watch the performance, leave your comment in the comment section, tell me what's your experience with these drivers, if they work fine, if they work better or, or worse for you, because that, that actually might happen. Usually, the newest drivers tend to be the best, usually, but it's not always the case. Even for example in Avatar, where the 23.12.1 drivers are way better than the 23.11.1, these new ones are even better than the 23.12.1, meaning that they improved it upon the previous drivers once again. So Avatar now performs even better than it performed before, and the same goes for Alan Wake. Once again, win-win situation. Thank you very much for watching, leave your comment with your experience in the comment section once again, and see you in the next video guys. Cheers. phone was ringing. Somehow I knew the call was for me. Hello? Alan Wake? Yes. Do you know who I am? No. Who is this? We'll get to that later. There are spies all over. Shadows. A sense of deja vu washed over me. Had I had this conversation before? Helen, listen to me carefully. 